Hello, I bring you a message titled The New World Order. We have a subtitled The Star of David. Now, when I talk about the New World Order, I'm not talking about the New World Order by Satanists, Islamists, and the Liberals, which is supposed to culminate in the One World Government. They call themselves the Globalists. Um, of course, they have as the One World Religion as one of their tools, the One World Religion. One of their tools to deceive the world, to follow them. Of course, a tool which is being um, currently championed by the Roman Catholic Pontiff. And they tell you that you don't have to be a Christian to make heaven. And, and, and uh, that's actually their talking point. We know this is a lie from the pit of hell. Because um, there are several ways by which men seek to find God. But there's only one way to God, which is Jesus Christ. The devil's new world order is devoid of moral dignity and is in complete and total denial of truth at all times. Now, let, let's look at the war between Israel and Hamas, for instance. It's, it's alarming that the world chooses to blame Israel when, right before her eyes, Hamas invaded Israel, butchered over 1,200 Israelis, raped women and girl children on the streets, beheaded people, Roasted Israeli babies in ovens, burned whole families. Israel declared war on Hamas. When this happened, Israel discovered that Hamas built tunnels underneath civilian homes, churches, mosques, children's schools, and hospitals, and were storing weapons in these places. In these places, these were their command posts, and they were firing missiles at Israel from these locations. Israel, of course, had to attack. To remove civilians, Hamas from those locations, but Israel took the pains to minimize, to mitigate the loss of civilian lives by painting flyers to warn civilians to vacate those areas before their bombs came or missiles came. Israel would call their phone numbers to tell them leave. We're going to bomb this place, and then Israel would actually knock on their roofs. Yet Hamas forced the people to remain in these locations and to get killed. Yet the world blames Israel for the civilian casualties in Gaza, notwithstanding the fact that Hamas has openly, Hamas leaders, Yahya Sinwa, openly declared to the world that the sacrifice of Palestinian civilians was a necessary thing for their war against Israel to be successful. The same thing happening with Hezbollah today. Hezbollah has dug tunnels, tunnels under civilian homes. Hezbollah stores weapons in civilians' homes. As Israel is going after them and transmitting and showing evidence of this, the world that chooses to believe lies still blames Israel for everything. It's the same thing with the American election. When I juxtapose Kamala Harris and, and, and Donald Trump, I see a remarkable difference. With Donald Trump, you have moral dignity for Americans. With Kamala Harris, is moral decay for Americans. For Donald Trump, you have greatness for America. With Kamala Harris, you mean the fall of, you get the fall of America. In Donald Trump's campaigns, we hear people chanting USA, USA, with pride and dignity, and flying American, the American flag. With Kamala Harris, but for the exigencies of the moment, I can assure you that they would have been flying Hamas and Hezbollah flags, and very rightly would have been chanting death to America and death to Israel. Hallelujah. The new world order we're talking about here is that in Christ. Hallelujah. In this new world order, Jesus is Lord. He came, he died, he was crucified on the cross of Calvary, he was buried on the third day, he resurrected for our salvation. Jesus is the Lord of God, the Son of God. He is the first begotten of the Father. He declared in John chapter 14 verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If we're talking about a new world order, most definitely there was a first world order. Now, what's this first order all about? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, New Living Translation, the Bible declares, Then God blessed them and, and said, Be fruitful and multiply, multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. He was talking to Adam, the man he had created with his wife. Hallelujah. Adam was a righteous man. God's purpose was for Adam to multiply, fill the earth with righteous men and women who rule the earth, hallelujah, and be able to worship God 
in truth and in spirit. Now, why was it necessary for righteousness to reign on earth? We're going to have to look at the kind of foundation that God built the earth upon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And also the impact of righteousness on the land. Psalm chapter is 2 verse 5. Amplified version declares. And the rulers, it says the rulers do not know nor do they understand. They walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction. All the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles of the administration of justice are shaken. What do we get from here? The earth was built on foundations of justice and God required righteous people to rule so as to sustain the earth on its path. Hallelujah. Number two, the Bible declares that righteousness exalts a nation. Hallelujah. Now, how is God expecting this to be achieved? Now, I want you to understand that once nature directly impacts on it, affects or determines his role, his, his position on the scale of justice. When a righteous man exerts himself, justice comes forth because justice is the application of righteousness. That's why the God of Israel is the God of justice because he is holy, righteous. So when he applies himself, righteous justice is naturally done. And that's why he wanted righteous people on earth. Hallelujah. So that when justice is done on earth, naturally, Peace will reign on earth and prosperity will burst forth, hallelujah, on earth. This was and this is still the purpose of God. I want you to know that God's purpose is never defeated. The Bible declares in Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, King James Version, He says, A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good tidings, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil tidings. It's an order of nature, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Adam was a righteous man. God expected him to fill the earth with righteousness and cause the name of the Lord to be praised and worshipped in truth um, and spirit and for justice to be done, to exalt the land. Hallelujah. Lucifer, the enemy of Israel, had fallen off the grade, the greed of God's grace. Hallelujah. And so, anytime he saw anyone who walks in, who is being favored, who is favored of God, he feels he felt and still feels intense pain. Hallelujah. Which is why he goes out of his way to try to knock you off the grid so that you can become like him. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible declares in Philippians, Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. He says, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling because there is someone who viciously seeks to knock you off the grid of God's favor. Praise the Lord. And this explains why he persisted until Adam fell. Hallelujah. Adam's fall opened the window for the enemy to begin to influence, influence man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible declares in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, New Living Translation. It says, The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. That's how terrible the influence, how terrible, how terribly the enemy wanted to bring man down to his level. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the new world order that God envisaged, a new order of righteousness, was compromised. Praise the Lord. And what emerged was a new world order of wickedness, moral bankruptcy, and injustice. When you hear the, the, the world leaders today of the United Nations, and of course the current Roman Catholic Pope declaring that they want to set up a, a new world order. I assure you they're not promising anything new. They just want to strengthen and optimize that wicked world order that came into place at the fall of Adam. That's why they want the one world government to give it authority and power so that it can it can control humanity in its entirety. That's what they are doing. I want you to know that the United Nations today has been hijacked by liberals, satanists, and Islamists. And that's why this is possible. I also want to reveal to you that the primary target of the Islamists, the, the, the satanists, and the liberal today is not the Jews. No. The chant of destroying Jews, wanting to destroy Jews, is just a, a, a platform to, to mobilize the people to their side. But their primary target is the Church of Jesus Christ. 
Christians. And as time goes, as time goes by, I'm going to reveal this to you. Now I want to talk about the star of David. I want to juxtapose the promise God made Abraham and that which he made King David. Genesis chapter 6, verse 24, New Living King James Version, the Bible declares, And I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 22, we see him there, he just spoke to Abraham. Now we're talking about David, to the King David. He says, As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of sea measure, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites. That minister to me. The same promise was given both of them. Now I want you to know that if Ishmael had not been born or conceived by the arm of flesh, this star would most definitely have been called the star of Abraham. But it's called the star of David because the Bible, like the Bible says in Romans chapter 9, verse 7, King James Bashar says, Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all called, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Because Isaac was the child of promise. God needed to make a distinction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father will give you praise. Now I want to let you know that Jesus Christ is no longer the star of David. He stayed the star of David to the Jews because they don't believe he has come. But somebody says they don't believe in Christ. That's not true. They believed in Christ all their lives. They've been waiting for this particular king to come. When he came, they didn't recognize him. They don't believe that that carpenter's son was the Christ they were waiting for. But he is. Today, he's no longer the star of David. He is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Father, will give you praise. And the Bible declares in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 43, King James Version. He says, to him, give all the prophets witness. Hallelujah. A great star was going to come. That's what the prophets were saying. He was going to come and he was going to destroy the, 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 the wicked world order that the enemy had put in place. This is why, in reality, the church is the primary target of the enemy of Israel. We're going to come to that much more as time goes by. Now let's talk about Daniel's vision, hallelujah, or Nebuchadnezzar's vision. King Nebuchadnezzar had a vision of a statue made of different metals and uh, materials. And David had, um, Daniel had to interpret the dream to him. Daniel chapter 2, verse 34 to 35, and then verse 44. New Living Translation declares, He says, As you watched, a rock was caught from a mountain, but not by hands. It struck the feet of iron. Hallelujah. The feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. Hallelujah. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away without trace like chaff, like on like chaff on a threshing floor. Note, but the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. Note this place. We're going to talk about it again. Verse 44 declares, During the reigns of this king, those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness and it will stand forever. Hallelujah. I want us to realize, of course, that the gold, the bronze, the silver all represented different kingdoms at different times. But I want you to know specifically that these kingdoms represented different ideologies. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that for you to completely destroy a kingdom, you would have to destroy the ideals that uphold that kingdom. And that is where this rock that was cut out of Mount Zion is come. Because that mountain was Zaman Zion. That rock was cut out of Mount Zion, an existing mountain. Hallelujah. So it came with the ideals of that kingdom. It was the ideology of that kingdom that destroyed the ideologies of these other kingdoms. The ideals of Mount Zion, the Bible is telling us, we completely pull down and uproot that of all the other kingdoms and grow and fill the whole earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father will give you praise. So who was this rock? Because that rock definitely represents someone. The Bible declares in Galatians chapter 3 verse 16, King James Version. He says, Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he said not unto seed as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. The star of David with the Jews flaunt on their flag actually represents Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Like the Bible said, all the prophets give Witness 
of him. Hallelujah. What this means is that what we are involved is an ideological warfare. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, King James Version declares, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to, to plant and to, to build and to plant. What are you rooting out? What are you pulling down? What are you building? What are you planting? Ideologies. He has given us the power to pull down all the ideologies of the nations in Christ and also to plant and build the ideology of Zion. Hallelujah. We're going to get to what this ideology is soon. Praise the Lord. Faith, Father, we worship you. Mm, Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, Amplified Bible declares. He says, For though we walk in the flesh as modern men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of men. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. Weapons, physical weapons of flesh and blood are weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. What fortresses? Strongholds of the enemy. Ideologies, ideals of the enemy. You see, we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that set itself up against the true knowledge of God. We are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Without doubt, those who imagine that they can destroy the church of Jesus Christ, imagine a vain thing. <laughs> the Satanists, the liberals, the Islamists who govern the United Nations, the liberal nation leaders who govern the West, on, I put on notice, hands with it. You cannot destroy the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to know that as a Christian, you are a chip of that mountain that that rock was cut off because the mountain grew by multiplication and filled the earth. We're going to talk about the process of this multiplication. But if you're a Christian today, born again, you are a product of that multiplication, meaning that you too are a chip of that rock of Zion. And that's why the Bible declares in Psalms chapter 125, verse 1, King James Version, say that they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. That rock was cut off the mountain of Zion. That rock multiplied to produce you. So also, you are made of the same material that that rock was made. Mount Zion, which is the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And this is why the Bible declares in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, Amplified Bible, says, Therefore there is now no condemnation, no guilt, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. Why? Because you are a product of that mountain, that Mount Zion, which is God himself. You cannot be condemned. The only one who can condemn you is you. Praise the Lord. But that's a message for another day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the star of David because he is of the lineage of David. We are stars of God because we are the lineage of Jesus Christ who heal, he hails from God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. And that's why the Bible declares in Psalm chapter 82 verse 6, King James Version says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we'll give you praise. We'll give you praise. Now we can understand the rage, the fear of the enemy of Israel, which prompted him to kill all children of two years and below in Bethlehem and, her, and, and in Verons because he wanted to lay his hand on Christ. He knew that something had happened that would alter and totally destroy that, that wicked order that the enemy of Israel had instituted. Praise the Lord. Now, he can't accuse you successfully anymore. Praise the, praise the Lord. If you are in Christ and born again, praise the Lord. You have been given tremendous power which torments and threatens everything he stands for. The Bible declares in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, King James Version, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Tremendous, tremendous, earth-shaking power given to mere mortals to torment Lucifer, the fallen archangel, and his demons, and of course, cohorts on earth. Why did God have to give have to give so much power to men? Hallelujah. This question is vital because we need to understand 
that God never does anything without a purpose. He is not into the business of massaging human egos. Praise the Lord. But for us to get to it, I need us to understand the passion that drives the heart of Jesus Christ. The Bible declares in Psalm chapter 45, verse 6 to 7, New Living Translation. It says, Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You rule with a scepter of justice. What is a scepter? A scepter is the symbol of authority of a kingdom, hallelujah, which encapsulates all the ideals, the virtues that that kingdom holds very high. That of Zion is justice. He continues. He says, you love justice and hate evil. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. Hallelujah. We can see from here that the passion that drives the heart of Jesus Christ is the love for justice and hatred for evil. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to know that this actually is the same passion that exists and drives your heart. Because the Bible declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, Amplified Bible says, For who had known the mind and the purposes of the Lord, so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ, to be guided by his thoughts and purposes. Hallelujah. We have the mind of Christ, so we understand the thoughts and purposes of the heart of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. Understand that this totally makes you an oracle of justice. God has made us kings and priests. Every king has a crown and a scepter in his hands. Zion has given you a scepter if you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, you have a scepter as a child of God. That scepter is a scepter of justice. So Zion expects you, God expects you to do justice everywhere and anywhere you find yourself. In your office, in the marketplace, on the road, uh, in your homes, wherever you are, stand up for justice. Praise the Lord. Why? Because that is your nature. Righteousness. Justice is the application of righteousness. And you are wholly righteous. You don't have any other nature but this righteous nature. When you apply yourself naturally, justice should comfort. If you're not doing that, you need to mind. You need to find out what you're feeding your spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's look at the justice mandate, which is the mandate God gave Jesus Christ when he came to the earth. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1 to 4, New Living Translation declares, says, Look at my servant, whom I straightened. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. Listen, many of us think we have the Holy Spirit so we can just pray in tongues and so we can, we can, we can satisfy our desires. No, the reason God has given us the Holy Ghost, the primary reason the Holy Ghost is that we might do justice on earth. Oh, hallelujah. He continues. He says, He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest weed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. Look, he's talking about you and I now because this is also our mandate. He says, He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instructions. I want you to know that this mandate is also our mandate because Jesus declared, He said, As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. So, this is the mandate that Jesus Christ has given us. We are oracles of justice and we are equipped. For this job because God has made us wholly righteous. He has given us his nature. We are chips of the Mount of Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are God's Pratuka Pradeya in the class and the nature of the God of Israel. The Bible declares in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 55, New Living Translation. It says, Evil people do not understand justice, but those who follow the Lord understand completely. We are equipped for this job. Stand up for justice wherever you are. Stop being the silent majority. Jesus never became silent among the, he never joined the silent majority on any issue. When he arrived at the temple, he found them trading a market in the in temple. He didn't keep quiet like a lot of other Jewish leaders who may have disliked did. He got a stick, whipped them, and chased them out of the temple and told them, My father's house is a place of worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father will give you praise. Our new world order represents justice, moral clarity, moral uprightness, mercy, and charity. And this is why the enemy is primarily targeting Christians because he hates orderliness. He hates moral dignity. He hates justice. He hates anything that will bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be deceived. And they are crying. They want to destroy Israel. No, the primary target is the church of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. If they can rally the world around them as they are attacking Israel, eventually they will face the church. But God 
stands against them. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that when we resist the devil, he shall flee before us. Hallelujah. Hey, Father, we give you praise. I glorify your name. In Jesus' name, Father, we worship you. Now, if you're watching me and you're not born again, I want to tell you the process of this multiplication. Hallelujah. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and confess his lordship, instantly the life of Jesus comes into you. Hallelujah. The old man is removed and a new life, which is the life of Jesus, comes into you. This is how this rock multiplied and filled the whole earth. Praise the Lord. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want to be a part of this great end time movement. You want to be a part of the church, which definitely will prevail against every other ideology that exists. It will swallow every ideology that exists and prevail against them. In Jesus' name. Repeat after me, speaking aloud. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of the living God. You came from heaven to the earth in the flesh. You suffered. You were crucified on the cross of Calvary. You died and you were buried. On the third day, you resurrected for my salvation. If you said this prayer, I love you so much. You are welcome to Zion. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now. Lord, I thank you for these ones. They are great stars of your kingdom. They will bring glory to your name this end times, Lord. Hallelujah. They will be pillars of justice all over the nations, showing forth the ideal and the virtues of justice of Zion in Jesus' name, impacting nations and causing many to turn to righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord said to me, stretch out your hands, so I'll heal the sick, perform notable miracles and even raise the dead. If you require this grace anywhere, your family, your nation, your business, Anywhere, take it in Jesus' name. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.